Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, we're going to take a look at RipGrep, which is an awesome utility that you can use to search for text within files, and it claims to do that faster than other Linux utilities that do the same thing. Also, RipGrep is actually part of the modern Unix suite of utilities, so what I'll do is throw a few more of those utilities from that suite into this video as well to make it even more awesome. And you know what? I am very excited to dive into RipGrep and show you all about it, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here on my laptop, I have the repository page pulled up for RipGrep. As you can see, there's quite a bit of information here. We have an installation guide, a user guide, frequently asked questions, and so on. So pretty much all of the information you'll need is right here. But what I'm going to do is show you how to install it, and I'll give you some examples. Now on my end, my laptop is running Ubuntu, so I'm just going to install the package from the official repositories. But if you click on the installation guide on your end, you'll see that they have versions available for pretty much everything. For example, Mac OS, there's a Windows build, and so on. Now in terms of Ubuntu, we can run sudo apt update, and that'll make sure that our repository index is fully up to date. It's always a good idea to do that before we install any package. And now that we've run that command, let's go ahead and search for ripgrep and make sure that it's available. So we should be able to run this command right here. And as you can see, in my case, ripgrep is available. Now, if you are running an older version of Debian or Ubuntu, it's possible that it might not show up in the repository. In that case, you're gonna to have to follow one of the other options in the installation instructions. But at least in my case, the package is available, so I should be able to install it with sudo apt install. And then the package name, which of course is ripgrep. And now it's installed. Now, once you have the package installed, then the binary should be simply RG, short for ripgrep. And of course, when I enter it with no parameters at all, we get this little helpful page here that gives us some information about how to use it. But let's go ahead and see some examples of using ripgrep to search for text within files. And the syntax is pretty easy. We start off with RG, and in my case, I'll search for the word port. And then what we do is we tell ripgrep which file we wanna search in. In my case, I want to search the SSH config file for the word port. So I'll type slash etsy slash SSH and then sshd underscore config. So if this works, it should give me which line number the word port appears in in the SSHD config file. And it's already done. So as you can see, it gives me the line numbers, which is very helpful. And the line of config that I want to edit is this one right here. So now I know that line number 15 includes the text that I was looking for. So for example, what I could do is type vim, that's my editor of choice, and I'll type plus 15 because I want vim to start on line number 15. If you are using a different text editor, there's more than likely a way to start on a specific line. You can check the man page for your editor to find out how to do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and edit that file. And as you can see, the cursor is on line number 15. And to prove that, I'll type colon set number, that'll turn on line numbers in Vim. And as you can see, it wasn't lying to us. It really is line number 15 where this text is found. So I'm going to exit out, and I don't want to save changes, so colon Q exclamation mark. And with the example that you just saw, it allowed me to search a file for a particular string. It gave me the line number. That's definitely very helpful. Now let's look at a different example. I'll type RG yet again, and the term that I want to search for this time is hello. But what I'm going to do differently this time around is I'm not going to give it a path. I'm just going to type this command right here. I'm not going to tell it where to search. I just gave it a search term, and that's it. So what do you think is going to happen? Actually, as you can see right here, in the absence of a path, it still worked. By default, if you don't give ripgrep a path, it's going to recursively search your current working directory. I'm currently inside my home directory, and as you can see here, 
there were two files, this one here and this one here, that included the search term that I was looking for. And this is just content from another tutorial video that I did in a previous recording session, but I knew that the word hello would be found somewhere in my home directory, and these two files right here are the ones that I found it in. Now, of course, you can give it a path if you'd like. In this case, I'm giving it the path to my home directory, and technically I don't really need to do that because I'm currently in my home directory, but if you do give ripgrep a path and not a file name, it's going to recursively search that path, even if you're not in that path at the moment. And I get the same results. So for example, if I was in a different directory and I entered that command again, it's going to give me the same results. And that's pretty cool. RipGrep is smart enough to know what you're trying to do, even if you don't give it a file name to look in. If you do give it a file name, it's only going to search that particular file. As an example of that, I'll just give it this file name right here, hello.txt. And as you can see, it's only showing results from that one file. Now what I'm going to do is set up another example. I'll change back to my home directory. And in another video, I actually created a Git repository and it's inside this folder right here. And as you can see, I have another file inside that repository named hello.txt. And it has just one line inside that file right now. When it comes to Git, you can create a Git ignore file. And what that allows you to do is make sure that a particular file doesn't make it into version control. So what I'll do is I'll create another file. I'll call it hello2.txt. And inside this file, I'll just type a simple sentence. I think that's good enough. And then I'll save it. And now I have hello2.txt along with the original file right there. So I'll start another search. Let's go ahead and try this again. And specifically what I want to search for is the word rip grab. I did include that in the new file that I created, so it should be able to find it. And it did. It gives me the name of the file, as you can see right here. And then it shows me the line that contains the text that I searched for. I also like how it colored the output right here because RipGrep is in red and that's pretty cool. So it basically highlights the word that I was looking for. But what does this have to do with Git? Git actually features the ability to ignore files. And that's important because sometimes there might be files that you don't want in a Git repository. So what I'll do is I'll just create yet another file and I'll give it the name .gitignore. And inside this file, what I'm going to do is give it the name of the file that I just created, hello2.txt. Let's go ahead and save it. And I'll clear the screen. And let's try that search command one more time. Nothing shows up, but wait a minute. I searched for this word right here, and it is inside the file, we know that it is because I use cat to show the contents of the file, and we see that right here. But the reason why it didn't come up in the search when we ran the search here is because I included the file name hello2.txt inside the .git ignore file. So ripgrep is smart enough to know that it's not supposed to search in files that are private or the files that you want ignored. And that's very useful because that file could contain something that's very private, like an API key, for example, something that I don't want in the repository, but also something that I don't want shown on the screen. And because I added that file name to the .git ignore file, ripgrep respected that and made sure not to show results from that file. So what I'm going to do now is actually remove the .git ignore file because I have another example that I want to show you, and this time I do want ripgrep to look inside that file. So for this example, I'll start a new search. And the term that I want to search for, again, ripgrep. I want to search in the file hello2.txt, and then I'm going to type dash r, and then I'll type the word Linux. Now this is interesting. Instead of showing ripgrep is awesome, which is what I put in the file, it's instead telling me that Linux is awesome. And that's exactly what dash r does. It replaces one word for another. So in this case, it replaced the word ripgrep with the word Linux. So what happens if we cut out the contents of the file? It still says ripgrep is awesome. So what actually happened is that when I did the replacement, it replaced it in the results that are shown, but it didn't actually modify the file. 
Now, what's very interesting about this is that there's no option, as far as I'm aware, according to the documentation anyway, that allows you to actually modify the file. So the replace option will modify the output, it will not change the file. Of course, there's always a way to do it. This is Linux after all. There's always a way to get around pretty much everything. And by chaining commands together, you could probably cause RepGrep to overwrite the file. But as of the time I'm recording this video, there's no option, at least not yet, to do a replacement in the file itself. The dash R option will only replace the information that's shown in the output. As you just saw, RepGrep is an amazing utility, and it allows you to basically search your file system for text a lot faster than other solutions. But that's not all. RepGrep is actually part of a suite called Modern Unix. And here on my laptop right now, I have the GitHub page for Modern Unix pulled up. And as we can see, there's all kinds of utilities here that we could go ahead and try out. Now there's no way I could cover all of these utilities in one video. So I'll leave it up to you to check out the other utilities in the Modern Unix suite for yourself. But you know what? Why don't we go ahead and try out a few of these utilities? I think that'll be a lot of fun. So here in my terminal, what I'm going to do is actually install the first of the utilities. Let's go ahead and check out EXA. Now on Ubuntu, I can run sudo apt update. We want to make sure that our package repository index is fully up to date. And that's all set, so now we can install EXA. Of course, apt is specific to Debian, Ubuntu, and derivatives of those distros. And if you're running a different distribution on your end, just make sure you check the repositories to find out if the package is actually there. I know it's here in Ubuntu because I checked off camera, so I'll go ahead and install it. And there we go. The GitHub page mentions that EXA is supposed to be a modern replacement for LS. So for example, if I run ls-l, you can see the results here. I have quite a few things here. And this is fine. It gives me a lot of information about the contents of my current working directory. So let's now run exa and see how that compares to ls. I'll type exa-l. I like to always have a long listing when I can. And as you can see, it's a little bit different. We have some cool colorization here. So we see the D for directory, that's in blue. You have the username in a different color, the date in a different color, and so on. That's pretty neat. Now another thing I could do is type dash dash tree, and that'll give me a tree view of the contents of my directory. And I'll make the font size a little bit smaller, so that way it shows up better. And as you can see, we have an awesome tree view for each of these files. And I think that looks really cool. Check that out. So not only do we see the contents of our current working directory, we also see what's underneath them as well. And that could definitely be useful. Now let's go ahead and install another of these utilities. And the next one will be bat. So I'll press enter, enter again. And bat aims to be a replacement for cat. And you might think that the binary is called bat, but it's actually bat cat. And I think the reason why they did that is to avoid a name collision with another binary. And the binary for this might be called bat on a different distribution. Just check the package to make sure. But anyway, I'll just go ahead and inspect the same file as last time. And let's see what it looks like. Look at this. This is so cool. We see line numbers here on the left hand side. And there's syntax colorization as well. That's pretty cool. I like this a lot actually. I might even permanently add this to my tool set. This is really cool. So I figured I would show you guys a few of the utilities within the modern Unix suite, and you just saw a few of them in this video. Definitely check out the rest of them for yourself. I highly recommend it. They're really awesome. So there you go. In this video, I showed you guys the basics of RipGrep, which is an awesome utility that helps you find text within files. And since it's part of the modern Unix suite of utilities, I also showed you guys some additional utilities within that same suite as well, which is really cool, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did like this video, then please click that like button, because that lets YouTube know that other people might benefit from this content as well. As always, I have some awesome content coming very soon, so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out, and I'll see you in the next video.